Hello, I am Dr. Rohit and I will be presenting a case today. Dr. Please. Uh, 69-year-old male patient hailing from Kodungallur. He is a dairy wage worker okay. and uh, he presented with complaints of bilateral pedal edema since past two weeks, breathlessness since one week and uh, acute onset of cough since one week. Okay. History of the presenting complaints. So, can you, before going to the history itself, can you tell reasons for bilateral pitting pedal edema, cough, breathlessness, what may be the reason? Sir, bilateral pedal edema could be a cause of… Uh, All together. Sir, uh, right, heart failure. It uh, looks like a right heart failure, failure or fluid overload mm -hmm. due to any reason, fluid like anemia, uh, hypoalbuminemia or any other fluid overload like uh, renal failure or directly go to the right heart failure. failure. All these things can present with the same type of features. Yes. History of presenting complaints. The patient was apparently asymptomatic two weeks back when he developed edema bilaterally in the whole of lower limb which extended up to his hips. He had difficulty in walking due to this. Edema increased, decreased with rest. Edema was gravity dependent and was present over the sacrum while lying down. This was associated with pain in the abdomen which was diffuse and catching type of pain. Pain relieves when edema goes. This was followed by an exacerbation of breathlessness since one week. He felt breathing difficulty after walking a few distance on level ground and this affected his day-to-day -day activities. There was no diurnal variation but he felt better on lying onto the right side. He also had an acute onset of dry cough since one week. Cough was intermittent more in the lying down position and felt better after sitting up or li lying towards the right. Cough was associated with pain in the right scapular region because of which he finds it difficult to sit back. There was no diurnal variation for the cuff. No history of chest pain, hemoptysis, no hoarseness, palpitations, no significant weight loss, fever or night sweats. There was also no history of syncope, PND, orthopnea or reduction in urine output. Mm. Past histories. He had three similar uh, episodes in, within the past two years. And he was diagnosed of pulmonary fibrosis two years back. He was on regular medications for breathlessness till one year back and is under BiPAP for the past one year. Okay. History of recurrent respiratory infection since past two years. So, last one year you are told BiPAP. Yes. Okay. Is it uh, same as CPAP or BiPAP? Uh, you know what is the difference? So BiPAP is uh, both may be same mission. BiPAP is mainly used in emergency room for acute breathlessness. CPAP is a same type of mission but it is mainly used in chronic lung diseases. Okay. They are used at home like obstructive sleep apnea and pulmonary fibrosis. Okay. There is slight difference in settings but mission may be same. There is no history of diabetes mellitus, hypertension, dyslipidemia or tuberculosis. Hmm. Family history, there is no relevant fam family histories. So, personal history, patient has a mixed diet, the appetite has been reduced since past two days, sleep cycle is normal, bowel and bladder movements are normal. And uh, he used to smoke two cigarettes per day for 10 years, but stopped 25 years back. So, one pack here, sir. Okay. Not habituated to alcohol consumption. So, general examination. Okay. The patient was conscious, cooperative, oriented to time, place and person. Height 151 centimeters, weight 53 kilograms, BMI 20.44 kilogram per meter square. Moderately built and nourished. And so, grade 2 club clubbing was present. Okay. Grade 2 means? Sir, uh, obliteration of low v bond angles. Oh, obliteration of angle. Okay. No pallor, icterus, cyanosis, and lymphadenopathy. Sir, bilateral pitting pedal edema is present, extending up to the hip. Okay. Vitals. Pulse rate is 80 per minute. Rhythm regular. Volume and character normal. Condition of vessel wall is normal. No radio femoral or radio radial delay. Other peripheral pulses are bilaterally palpable. Okay. Respiratory rate is 23 per minute and type was abdominal thoracic. BP was 118 bar 84 mm Hg from, measured from right upper limb in using adult cuff in lying down position. Temperature patient was afebrile sir. sir. Head to toe examination sir, skin, scalp, eyes, face, nose, oral cavity and chest and abdomen were normal sir. Oh. sir examination of respiratory system. Sir, upper respiratory tract. So, nose, nose and nasal septum was normal, oral cavity normal, pharynx and tonsils were normal. 
lower respiratory tract inspection, trachea appears to be deviated to the right side, sir. Okay. Uh, apex beat not visible, chest symmetrical and shape was symmetrical, movements bilaterally symmetrical, no use of accessory muscles for use respiration, no kyphoscoliosis or no drooping of shoulders, okay. no supraclavicular hollowing or infraclavicular flattening was present and there is no intercourse indrawing, no sinus scars or dilated veins. On palpation, there was no local rise of temperature or tenderness, trachea was deviated to the right side and apex was seen in the left fifth intercostal space, intercostal medial to the mid clavicular line. Chest movements were bilaterally equal, chest expansion was 2 cm, chest circumference 95 cm, right hemithorax was 45 cm and left hemithorax was 50 cm. Uh, and anteroposterior uh, transverse diameter was 20 to 31 sir. Vocal fenders decreased in all areas on the right side. Percussion, liver dullness was fifth, uh, felt in the fifth right intercostal space and all areas were resonant. So, trop space was also resonant sir. Okay. Auscultation, auscultative findings, vesicular breath sounds heard in, heard in all areas, intensity was normal. Coarse inspiratory crepitations heard in the right infra axillary and infra scapular areas. Okay. Vocal resonance was decreased in all areas on the right side. So, so examination of the CV system, inspection, shape uh, normal, apex width not visible, JVP sir was elevated 5 centimeters above the sternal angle. Okay. JVP elevated means what? Sir, uh, in a patient was uh, JVP is elevated. So there's, uh, there's decreased venous return. So there is uh, most probably there is a volume mm -hmm. overload or right ventricular mm -hmm. failure, failure or right right atrial failure. This all can increase the JVP, but the waves may be different in each condition. Practically, it will be difficult in emergency room to see the what is the wave, what is the finding. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, uh, consider the previous clinical history and all. Whatever it is, when the JVP is elevated and if it is uh, if there if there is pulsations that indicates volume overload is there. Mm -hmm. If there is no pulsation, then it is SVC yes, obstruction. Yes, so that two important things you should remember. If JVP is elevated, pulsations are there, then there is volume overload or RV in involvement is there. If there is JVP elevation, no pulsation, SVC is obstructed. Okay. No precordial bulge, parasitic heave or pulsation, no sinus scars or dilated veins. Mm -hmm. Palpation, no local rise of temperature or tenderness, apex width was felt in the fifth left intercostal space, 1 cm medial to the mid clavicular line, no thrill, parasternal heave or epigastric pulsations. Percussion, so the right cardiac border corresponds to the right sternal margin, left cardiac border corresponds to the apex and left second intercostal space was resonant. Auscultation, sir, mitral, tricuspid, aortic and pulmonary and neoaortic area, S1 and S2 were heard and there were no murmurs present. Okay. So, examination of the GI system, oral cavity, there is good oral hygiene, no caries or ulcer, tonsils were normal. In, on inspection, shape was normal, umbilicus was central and inverted, all areas were equally with respiration. No visible peristalsis, no visible swellings, scars, sinuses or dilated veins. On palpation, there is mild tenderness in the right hypochondrium, no guarding or rigidity, there is mild hepatomegaly present, sir. Okay. no splenomegaly. Percussion, liver felt in the fifth right intercostal space, liver span was 14 centimeters and no shifting dullness or fluid thrill. Top space was resonance. Okay. Auscultation, so bowel signs of 5 per minute and no brewery or venous hum. Okay. So external genitalium per rectal examination was not done, no. sir. Okay. So examination of CNS for it was any not, finding? No, sir, no, no but any what will be what will is your diagnosis, clinical diagnosis? Sir, the patient uh, uh, has coarse crepitations. Okay. So and bilateral. Uh, bilateral. Yes. And so okay. more towards the right side. More towards the right, right side. He has got coarse crepitation. Coarse. Bilateral pedal edema no. is there. No anemia. No anemia. Okay. Sir. So what will be your clinical impression on this patient? Sir, he has indecision. History you have to add, and uh, uh, current clinical scenario. Uh, the patient has uh, bilateral pitting pedal edema. No. Uh, he has grade 4 dyspnea okay. uh, and acute onset of dry cough. Okay. Along with that, is, he has elevated JV. And he had previous history of ILD. ILD, yes, sir. Okay. So, what will be your diagnosis? Sir, could be an exacerbation of the 
infection, in infection or in ILD, sometimes the disease itself can progress or there can be secondary infection, infection. in that. Okay, yes. then. Sir, and he has a right heart failure. He has got core pulmonary. Cor right heart failure, secondary to lung disease is called as core pulmonary in failure or not in failure. Core pulmonary can be in failure, right, right heart dilatation can be there. Some patients go to failure. So, this is in failure or not in failure? So in, in, in failure. Failures. So, complete diagnosis, interstitial lung disease, disease, acute exacerbation of disease, bar infection so, and patient has developed secondary core pulmonary due to this disease and he is in failure now. Okay. Our primary target is to treat the patient. How to treat this patient? How to so, treat? Uh, sir, uh, antifibrotic agents? No, no, that is secondary. Primary target is no, to treat is uh, so, he has got fluid overload now. Okay. So, we have to take care of this patient's primary problems, sorry, uh, acute problems now, then the primary problem will be addressed. So, his airway should be taken care, breathing should be taken care, circulation should be taken care. Here the main problem is, is there is an impending uh, respiratory failure because he has got fluid overload, he has got bilateral crepitation, breathing difficulties. Sir. So, what is the reason for the current situation? So this is a failure. failure so. so, how do you treat the failure in this patient? RV failure is there. Secondary to lung disease. How do you treat it? So Diuretics. Lasix or furosemide. How much furosemide you can give? How much you can give? So, normally we give 40 to 80 milligram. 80 milligram IV. Okay. It can be given as IV or sometimes if the patient's BP is slightly low, we can give it as infusion also. So, we give Lasix so that fluid will be removed from the body so that the uh, RV failure features can be masked. Failure is still there because there is a problem in the lung. So, that from the symptoms patient will be relieved. So, Lasix can be given. If required, we have to start oxygen. If the saturation is low, we have to start oxygen. Some patients like you told, BiPAP or CPAP may be required. All these chronic conditions, we advise continuous positive pressure ventilation. Okay, not in BiPAP. It is a different mode of the same machine. So, CPAP or BiPAP may be required yeah, in the, uh, whatever patient clinical scenario is. Suppose he is admitted with ARDS or pneumonia, then BiPAP ventilation will be better. Okay. Chronic patients like this on home therapy, CPAP may be better. Okay. So, that will be started. Then you have to rule out infection. How do you rule out infection? You take blood culture. You can take blood counts. CBC, complete blood count, look for any uh, WBC count elevation is there. Then blood culture may be helpful, some patient blood culture can be positive, 30 percent of the pneumonia patient can have positive blood culture, not all, okay, so that can be taken. Ask for sputum culture, sputum culture for uh, aerobic or anaerobic whatever it is, sputum fungal culture, that also should be done because it is a long standing problem, okay. So, that also should be Sorry, taken. Uh, uh, high, res high resolution CT scan? Can be HR CT can be done, yeah. but the problem is in acute infection, when you take a CT scan, the infection will be covering all the lung area. So, you may not get the fibrotic part properly. So, it is be always better to treat the infection if it is present, then ask for a complete CT. Or if there is no infection, directly we can take a CT also. Okay. So, what else you can, so he has asked for culture, complete blood count. Another investigation is procalcitonin. That will tell you whether any bacterial, bacterial infection is there or not. Okay. Another test is galactamine. Galactamine rules out lung fungal infection like aspargillosis. That also can be done if there is uh, availability. Otherwise, simple sputum examination will tell you whether bacteria is there, fungus is there, all these things. Okay. If nothing is there, it is only exacerbation of disease. Okay. We go ahead with the CT scan yeah. acutely. Okay. What you see in CT scan? Sir, in CT scan, honeycomb cysts. Okay. So, sometimes you can give, see fibrosis, fibrosis. Sometimes you can see lot of honeycomb cysts in the lung. Okay. Whatever it is, it is a damaged lung. Okay. We cannot completely revert the problem. Okay. You have to only treat the acute problem and you have to prevent secondary infections. Okay. The ultimate answer for a completely damaged lung is lung transplantation. We are not discussing that now. So, this patient may have some infections if the counts are elevated. So, we treat with antibiotic. What antibiotic we can give normally in a damaged lung? Damaged lung can be 
gram negative or gram positive. Normal, normal lung infections are always gram positive infection, streptococci. But a damaged lung is always, most of the time it is gram negative infection. Sometimes it can be gram positive also. So, what will be the ideal antibiotic for this patient if he is having infection? Penicillins normally cover gram positive. That is not a good choice. Piperacillin tazabactam is a good choice. We can give piperacillin tazabactam or you can give ceftriaxone with penicillin. If we are going from uh, lower level antibiotic, ceftriaxone covers gram negative. Crystalline penicillin or amoxicillin covers gram positive. Or like you told, we can go for a higher antibiotic. Depending on the clinical set situation, you have to select the antibiotic. Piperacillin tazabactam is a good choice in this type of patients. But these patients may require long-term antibiotic prophylaxis, okay, because every time they get infection, what we can do for that? We can do azithromycin prophylaxis. Azithromycin is a drug, it's a macrolid, can, uh, it can be given for acute infection. But 250 milligram alternate days for many days, for 3 months, 6 months, can reduce the rate of infection, rate of even inflammation in the lungs can be reduced. Okay. However, ILD also should be treated because this patient is having basically a lung fibrosis. Okay. So, that should be treated by drugs. Antifibrotics. What are drugs? Perfinodons and hmm. nindotanip, sir. Okay. Prokinase inhibitors. Okay. There are a lot of drugs. Okay. Different category drugs are there that can be started by, with the help of pulmonologist. Okay. okay. So, this patient requires acute problem like breathing difficulty breathing. and fluid overload. You treat with Lasix, yes. that is furosemide, remove some amount of fluid, then start him on oxygen or BiPAP ventilation. ventilation. Treat the infection with basic antibiotics, what is required there. May sometimes be, we have to give long term antibiotic prophylaxis. Acithromycin is normally used drug. Then antifibrotic drug should be started depending on what type of lung involvement is there. Let's suppose this patient is saying Rheumatoid with arthritis with lung involvement treatment is different. If the patient is only having lung mm -hmm. fibrosis, that means individual, sorry, independent lung disease, ILD or uh, fibrosis, then you have to treat in a different way. So, that all uh, uh, can be done by a specialist. But in emergency room, you have to treat this patient's basic problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.